welcome. You're all welcome. You're all seated. I see you found your way up, safe and sound. Hope the journey was smoother than the roads will allow. It wasn't a long drive. Sure it wasn't. Now, come here to me. Did they catch you at the doorway? A foot between glass doors. A link to the arm. A stumble across to this world. Where you met with bread rolls and hugs. A cup of coffee or some news. Did your one down the road have a baby, did she? Indeed, she did. Take your coat off. The heating will rise in a minute till I thaw off autumn's bites from bent knuckles. I laugh my hands into yours, heating up whatever else is difficult to say, to blubber, to confess. Find the strength of ease in reassuring eyes. Tonight, I've brought you to Fort Lawn Drive in a house carved and widened for bodies in search for second homes. In a house with stories tailored to the length of placemats and milk cartons. The kitchen will cocoon you in envelope teapots, shuffling you in wooden seats, tucking in the lace cloth image of grandmother the kettle will call to you whistling time away, chatter rising instead. It becomes home, doesn't it? Did I mention that you are welcome? Enter this room. This is where to exhale layers of thoughts and conversations, spinning in webs of persons to become one with self enough to see the ooze and the blue walls and sea paintings and ahs and the wooden green chairs you sink into. A perfect performance of nature balanced in the sister's sunroom. While you are here, breathing its serenity, this sanctuary is built for service. Breathe out your prayers. I mentioned you are welcome, didn't I? Welcome to Fort Lawn Drive, the home of two presentation sisters. Tea or coffee? Thank you. So, um, I guess my first piece was an introduction, a welcome, and I hope you do feel really welcome. Um, I believe you guys are um, the sisters' neighbors and friends, and you are accustomed to being welcomed in such a wonderful place like this. Uh, I remember the first time I walked into the sunroom, I sat down, and I was like, oh, I really like this place. And that's the feeling I get every time I walk in here. Um, so I thought I'd welcome you once again. Um, my second piece is called Purpose. I, I wrote it and was inspired by the sisters Tibetan Singable. Does anybody know what that is? Yeah, me either. I, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't know what it was when I first saw it. Um, but after spending time with the sisters and I watched them kind of used it to meditate and to kind of go into a special silent place of prayer. And I remember as soon as they, um, I think it was Sister Anne that hit it once, I just closed my eyes and I was like, Um, so I'm going to show you how it works, in case you haven't ever seen it work. Um, so I wrote this piece called Purpose, and I kind of linked the reverberating silence and sound that comes from the Tibetan singing bowl with the sisters' personalities, and what, that pers what their personalities is like in a community like this, and how they brought a silence and a stillness to a place that the first time they walked into was kind of dramatic and new and chaotic for them. So, yeah, this is what Purpose is about.
What is it about silence that lays down your eyelids? Lullabied space long after it's fading. A void never empty. A thick presence of soundlessness. Rested after a time in this enigma, a soft warmth, a familiar another. You feel a deep knowing, a stirring. For some, after the sea length of silence is a call. For them, a call to their senses, a tender reminder of name, a graze to awaken, a touch that sets you alive. For others, they arise to purpose. They arrived in Fort Lawn Drive like a settled semicolon, a definite choice spoken in an uncompleted sentence, often observes a pause. The sisters arrived still, deliberate, bringing their silences with them. They didn't know yet where to stop the bleeding, which direction to turn their kind bandages. When they met, Fort Lawn had a rough voice, a potty mouth, an uneasy smile, resistant. What do you think you know of me? How do you think you can help? You can't begin to imagine the chaos I am capable of. With their stillness firm, Replying in action. I don't know you, but I will serve in ways I can. Come, rest whatever aches, whatever can be made soft by candlelight. I know I'm a stranger, but I know you are capable of gathering like siblings. Bring the living with you. Pray for the dying. I can't quiet the storms, but there are places I go to lay down prayers. We can be still together. We can have silence. Okay, so this point. <laughs> Um, I wrote this part inspired by one of the conversations I had with the sisters and it was just, you know when you're, you imagine what it's like for a kid to say a prayer or um, trying to revisit the space where you first said a prayer as a child and what that meant, if you had any clue what you were on about. Um, I told the sisters that uh, I grew up kind of half Catholic, half Protestant, because uh, I went to Catholic schools as a kid. Went to a Catholic primary school, Catholic secondary school, uh, but my family was Pentecostal, so it was an interesting ride for me, religion-wise. <laughs> and so this poem is inspired by what a child's perspective could be like saying the Lord's Prayer. So I hope you like it. Our Father who art in heaven. Are you in heaven or are you with us? You bear in my note too. So do I look above when I pray or need not? Maybe just around or within. Do you hear me when I think anyway? 
or just when I pray. Hallowed be thy name. Which do you prefer? Jehovah or Yeshua? God the Father or the Son? Sometimes they call you different things now. Sometimes magic. Sometimes energy. Sometimes a lie. Thy kingdom come. Can I come to? Can you reach down and grab me like you did Gramps when I was three? Thy will be done again and again. I don't usually know how it should be done, but I do know it does in circles till I learn. On earth as it is in heaven, Tell Gramps I said hi. There isn't much to earth anymore though. Mom's trying her best. Must be really hard. She keeps tripping over syringes. Give us this day our daily bread. I enjoy toast a few times a week. But it's all I've had recently. I know, I know. I remember the telly ad children. They don't have any. Give them my daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Well, I don't think I should say sorry if I don't feel bad. I mean, then it becomes a lie. So forgive me for unsorry apologies. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, if they're sorry, I accept their apology but not the boy that put his hands down my trousers. I don't accept his apology. And lead us not into temptation. Is everything I like a temptation? If I want it, is it wrong? If I desire it, is it bad? Mm. Shall I suppress it or free it? And deliver us from evil, our own, our families, our friends, deliver us. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Um, my next piece I titled Fort Lawn Drive because I maxed out my creativity <laughs> at that stage. <laughs> but I titled it Fort Lawn Drive and this piece is basically personifying Fort Lawn as if it were a person. Um, I remember the first time I met the estate, you know, um, and I thought so strangely beautiful and so so many trees so many leaves and like my favorite season in the year is autumn so you can imagine my pleasure um watching the leaves and all of that and so i personified it based on the stories that i've heard from the sisters and also from just understanding the work that they've done in this community and what fort lawn really means now so i hope you like this one too He stands tall, large, a hungry size of a stretch of land, snarling at passerbys after sunset, sweeping away children to the corners of their bedrooms, tucked in by their mother's trembling hands. He wears his hair as wild as oak in the summertime and trimmed grass hairs in the autumn took teenage years on his tarmac stained his bricks with half your children's Wednesdays he made a home for death cheating you of sons that should have lived that should have returned 
invited the winds to blow grief up your driveway. He cackles in police sirens, attempting to snuff shut destinies in metal cages, in the hands that cannot feed, cannot live, remaining barren. He dragged you through addictions. Your streets took soft feet. The people shake at the needle's memories. And I see you for it, Lord. How you've tried to scratch it off. The stigma. He started drawing features on the faces in the bedroom windows, giving the people identities and neighbors and friends and stories. And in the chaos, as comfort of community. Thank you. So, <laughs> it gets happier than that, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so this part, I'm gonna give away candles, if you'd like to take one. Don't feel any pressure to take candles. But you'll be the only one left out because <laughs> everybody's taking one, so. TV tells me you know it's There's something so pretty about um, lighting candles, even when it's still daytime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's something about bringing light to a space. Precious Lord, hold my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am Lead me home when my 
my day grows dream precious Lord hold me near when my life is almost gone hear my cry hear my soul hold my continue holding your candles and I'd like to end this hopefully pleasant ceremony with prayers of intercession um, I wrote these uh, from the bottom of my heart and I really didn't because of obviously the history of prayer and the importance of prayer I didn't want to perform it this is why I have cue cards and Prayer being a very important part of the sisters' lives and what they do daily. I thought it would be really nice to end with prayers of intercession. And if you don't mind, when I say, Lord, hear us, if you could answer, Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you. For each home across the area, for each family that has a faith or none, we ask that they experience peace and calmness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, the sick burdened with serious illnesses, the unwell minds, and those who care for them and share in their suffering. We pray they find strength and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those recovering, their families for keeping them strong, for the medicine that keeps them going, for the success of good treatment, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are mourning, that are filled with emptiness and loss and grief and confusion, we pray for comfort, we pray for peace, we pray for love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those that leave in death, we pray for a safe journey home as we remember them. Make their memory always be glorious. Lord, hear us. Lord, 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 Jesus. Jesus. We pray for the glad, the happy, and the joyful. May they, more, may they have more to smile about and more to be thankful for. Lord, hear us. Lord, 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 Jesus. Jesus. And lastly, we pray for the home of the Presentation Sisters of Fort Lawn Drive. May it be ever filled with good news. May they be a cause for celebration always. May they receive ten times the love they give. Lord, hear us. Lord, 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 Lord. Thank you. And God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.